as you can see, Harley is progressing. It, it's getting there. So that's a nice sign. But one part that does need looking at is the brakes. And that is a bit, it's a bit of an awkward one really because the front end is off a YZF 450. Basically means that we, we don't have to, but it would make sense to use YZF 450 uh, master cylinder and caliper. And then on the rear, I wanted to upgrade the rear caliper again because the original Harley caliper is a single pot so it's one piston pushing pushing brake pads basically and the brake pads are literally this big that's all we're talking about they're not very big at all and I use the back brake a lot I always have it's you know one of the ways I ride so that's just it wasn't kind of gonna really cut it really I've been I'm in an hour and looking at different options speaking to people that know significantly more about motorbikes than me I think we've come up with a plan front end use the YZF 450 YZF 450s uh, Yamaha's motocross bike, if you don't know. They also supermoto those, and supermotos mean smaller, stickier tires and big brakes. So they take a YZF 450 and they put a 320mm front disc on it, and then that also means that the caliper has to be set back. So, supermoto kit, front end for the YZF 450, I'm pretty sure that's going to be enough stopping power. That's that bit sorted. Rear, however, that's a little bit more complex. The rear caliper is on the left hand side and then the, the drive, the belt slash chain drive is on the right hand side as you're looking at the back of the bike. Majority of motorcycles nowadays are, or at least off-road motorcycles are, the other way around. Because of the way the caliper is orientated and the way that it needs to be fed the fluid and, and all that sort of complex part of it, a rear left caliper would be the same as a front right hand caliper. So I had a look around and what actually works quite well is the front right hand caliper off a FZ6R. So we got one of those. I'll get Ollie to put a photo of that up, but it's a, it's a street bike. Um, so I finally got the brake setup I think is going to work. I've got the second hand caliper, I've got the second hand master cylinder and that's purely off eBay, scouring eBay. So I've got them now and I want to strip them down a little bit, have a look at what we've got hold of yeah, and get them a good of operating quality as possible. This is the master cylinder, front master cylinder. It is off an older model. It's it's a little bit, you know, worn out. It's not sort of immaculate. That's just a bit sort of pitted and almost like paint's flaking off. So I'll give that a clean. It's a couple of marks, stone chips, wears and tears, but the seals are good, the action is good. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I think that'll work really nice. Rear master cylinder sticking with the original Harley one. So that's, that's fine, but that was really clean and tidy. This is the front uh, caliper. This is off a motocross bike and it sits in that orientation on the bike. The bottom is where you're getting all the stone chips and everything and horrible, so as you can probably imagine, the bottom is a little bit worse for wear. A scotch bright pad and a bit of elbow grease will make a massive difference to this. Rear caliper again, this is immaculate. This is, you know, it's off a road bike. It doesn't get hammered the same as an off-road bike. This is gonna require some fabrication work. So this will be given to Dan yet again. He gets all my front projects and tells whatever I broke, he fixes. So this can be his problem. So I'll just hand it to that and go, with Daniel, that is a you problem, no longer a me problem. Make that work, please. We'll strip them all down, well, relatively, strip it down, have a look, that's the plan. Remember that nice starter motor we received? Well, it was time to get that fitted to the bike so we might eventually get the thing running. This obviously put Alad in a good mood because he was singing a happy little tune. <laughs> The starter motor actually sits in there, so it will come through there, cog will engage on that, and then hopefully the bike will fire. So it's just simply two bolts and a gasket, and that's it. And that is the new starter motor. As you can see, it looks okay at a quick glance. It's already flaking off the paint because I just sprayed straight over that rubber. Um, you can see the spray there, but you know, it's new, it's a lot better than the, well, I think it's new. new newly refurbished, or new to me at least. that should spin out and engage with there and then crank her over. And if you're wondering why it looked like I couldn't use a spanner, it's because I couldn't be asked to take all of that off to get that silly little bolt in. So I made it very awkward for myself. This is my country, my damn country, give me my country, you can keep the rest. This is my Hand side, I've done another drawing so I can actually remember where the hell everything goes. If you ain't ever done something you regret, well then I'm proud of you. And now get it. 
Whilst we were still waiting for the parts for the Electron Carb, Alad took the opportunity to dry fit the two brothers' air intake and get everything mocked up. I think you'll agree, it looks aggressive. So brackets there, carb will sit in that big hole there, which is nice. Got the breathers on. I'll cut those to length once the carb is in. That's nipped up, that's all tightened up. So yeah, happy with that, nice and simple. Right, back up at Dan's, come up to the uh, Mad Atta's workshop as it is, and uh, drop the bike off. And uh, we're gonna be mocking up some things for tanks and wheel alignment and a load of other stuff. So bike is in and Dan is currently ferreting and seeing what we've got to deal with. That is the original tank with the original mounts and then with the saddleman seat that doesn't quite interface well because basically the tank is too far back. Um, and I don't like the way it fuels and it's just wide and horrible looking. So lovely Dan is gonna make a new one. Just like that. Just like that. This is one of the problems with the whole Imperial metric thing is that I have to remember to bring my own tools. But thankfully, I have an enormous tool roll to fit Omni spanners in. Moscow, thank you. I've been here five minutes and made myself uh, quite at home and Dan has already turned my motorcycle into what looks like a beluga whale. I don't think that's gonna hold a lot of petrol, mate. I'm in the director's chair. I see why Ollie likes uh, likes producing now. It makes a lot more sense. I've missed a trick here, and he's nailed it. Yup, I wasn't born yesterday. While Salad and Sprocket had a boogie, the Mad Hatter, as he's now known, got to work designing the tank. I'm going to let him explain to you exactly what's going on. It's basically a 5000 series aluminium. So if you anneal it, it goes like lead, basically. Sharpie marker, just general sharpies. The annealing temperature of the alley is the temperature that the ink and everything flashes off the alley. Pressure go down yet? Yeah. You tell me, mate. <laughs> Looks good to me. <laughs> Get in there. Get in. Yet again, I'm tuning in with an admission. Once again, it's an admission of me being an idiot. There will be one of these where it's an admission where I come across like good. This isn't it. I had a bucket. Yes, a bucket, like a builder's bucket that you'd use for rubble that I put a load of stuff in off the Harley very, very early on in the strip. And that bucket has been sat way down in that corner. And it was only when I was doing the brakes and I was thinking of lines and cables and things like that as I was doing it, I thought, I'm sure there was like lines and cables. I took off these like oil lines and cables and stuff like that. I'm sure I put them somewhere. And I did. I put them in this bucket. And this bucket also has wiring looms and all sorts of stuff. And I need to now figure it all out. The dog is equally as impressed with me. And not only figure out, but also try and make work. So that's another job. Kind of thinking I should start labeling stuff. As you can see then, progress on the bike is going really, really well. Um, there's a couple of little jobs finishing off, but other than that, I'm happy with how things, everything's going. One of those jobs is the front suspension. Now, the front suspension on this, as we all know, is off a YZF450, which is a motocross bike, and was definitely never intended to go on to a rally Harley Davidson. Now, if we were talking the differences in just riding a normal Yamaha, just a YZF450, the difference between motocross suspension setup and rally suspension setup is quite significant. Never mind something with 70 to 80 more kilos 
and pretty much double the horsepower. So you can imagine it needs a little bit of work. So Ollie, the guy who runs Serra MX, he also has a suspension company. So it's gonna go over to Ollie, he's gonna revalve it, set it to my weight, the demands, everything, and give it a good freshen up because it needs fork seals and all that sort of stuff. And then there may be a little surprise in how the front suspension is gonna look. So I'm gonna strip this off, well, actually, I'm gonna jack the uh, suspension, the, the bike up, strap it to the ceiling so it can't fall on me while I carry on doing other jobs, take the front wheel out, take the suspension out, and then get the suspension shipped over to Ollie. So that's today's job. There you go, then you can see forks are off. That was like 10 minutes. Forks are off, strapped her down so she can't go anywhere now. So she's strapped up to the main beam and strapped through both yokes down onto the workbench. So she's pretty, pretty solid there. Pretty happy with that. So I can carry on working, mocking things up, get the forks sent off and um, yeah. That'll do. So I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to snip this mug guard off, see how that mocks up, see how the clearance is looking at the back of the frame. So it looks really tight, but because of how I've pulled these forward on the zip ties, I'll pull it back actually, should I say. I think that's what's causing that. If not, then just a couple of washers to offset it and it'll give me the clearance I need. That's the front fender bolted in then. So you've got a normal washer and then a spring washer just in the back. You can see that. Then that gives me clearance there. I don't want it too too far forward because after all it is a mud guard and I don't really want mud building up in all the fins because that's just not going to be very good. So yep, yeah, that's all mounted up and that looks nice. It'll look a lot better when the front forks go in. It'll look more like a bike. So that's all done. Nice little simple jobs. I like these. These should happen more often. Final job for the day. This is just a tidying up odds and sods day basically. Final job for the day is this wiring loop. Now, I'm pretty sure me and a really good friend of mine, Seats, are gonna make a new wiring loom for this because I don't need a lot on there. So I'm pretty confident we can do that. But he did suggest if we have the old factory one, this one, strip all the heat wrap, all the cabling off, off it so we can see where all the wires go and then it gives us something to go off. So I'm gonna strip that back. Seats is ordering all the wires and everything that we'll need, switches. Uh, and then he's going to come up and we will get that thrown together. So I'm going to strip that off and then that's ready to go. Right, Seats is going to launch a rugby ball at me. Seats has... I'm so nervous. <laughs> Seats hasn't seen the bike yet, so I think it's only right <laughs> that um, I get his reaction on camera. Do you think? Yeah. So I'm going to film him doing that. <laughs> Going in. Oh shit. I left seats for all of 15, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. I left seats for 15 minutes and this is what he comes and does. He tidies up. So this is the old loom, original loom? Yeah, the original loom, yeah. So we're just trying to figure out which bits were used for what. What is Huh? <laughs> Let's just sort that out. And we'll, oh God! Um, it's still there. Yes, much better. So anyway, yeah, this is the. Uh... And, and you can and you can you can keep the duck. Oh, thank you. You were saying? Uh, yeah, original loom. It was a mess. So just tried to tidy it up to see exactly what bits were where. A couple of little bits that were confusing us. Wasn't sure what this was. That's the. Uh, you that's mean that enormous grey? This box. enormous grey box that, looks, that says Harley Davidson patent pending. Yeah, that's the turn signal cancel module or relay or something. So we don't need to worry about any of that. Ignition. Don't need to worry about that. Starter relay. Starter relay. Okay. There's, there was a bit of. Um... This is a vacuum operated electrical switch, which I'd never heard of before. Okay, that was for the car, wasn't it? I think. Uh, and that's part of the ignition module. So what does that do? I don't know. That's not needed. Uh, no, so that is the uh, electrical module, which is going to be replaced by the one which is whatever the, the one is you've got. Uh, and then a load of switches for handlebar controls. Chrome ones. I think we should use those. <laughs> you can leave now. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll get you. So, what do you need off me? Uh, the so ignition that's going on the bike. Uh, yeah, the bits that are going to go on the bike. So, the new ignition box. Uh, and I also need you to try and find the lead, this badger here which should be fixed to the engine somewhere, which comes out. What size do you need? Quarter inch, please do. Three eighths, yeah? This one? No, 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 the smaller one. This one? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you, you can't have that one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> 
will a socket do? <laughs> so if you remember, I basically said that the only spare parts I wanted on this bike were either Harley or Yamaha. So it's got a YZ front end, which is the Yamaha um, motocross bike. Rear caliper is off an FZ6R, which is also Yamaha. So then it just makes it easier for spare parts. Now with that, obviously you've seen that my rally race training bike is typically a WR450 and I really like the controls, really like some of the things on that. So I bought this as the ignition switch. It's a, it's a WR or YZ replacement part. Seats is gonna make this work. He's good like that. So this will be what starts and stops the bike. And I just like the way it looks and it's a bit, a bit suave. So again, sticking with the Yamaha theme. Okay, well, that's, for a start, that looks more like one of these ones here, so... Uh, no, maybe it is, uh, no, maybe it is that one. Yeah, it is that one, isn't it? It's only got two pins. Yes. So this is the Dynatech Ignition that came with the Hammer Performance Kit. So I rang these guys up because I knew nothing. These are the instructions which actually basically say everything what they tell you when you call them up. It really helps if you read these. And then this sits there. Inside. Yeah, inside. I like to be inside. You're gonna get lots of these weird little comments in the back of videos. Ollie fucking hates it when I do shit like that. Because <laughs> it totally screws up his filming. <laughs> Yes, Seaton, it does, you muppet. Anyway, once Tweedledum and Tweedledickell had figured out what to do, they knuckled down and got to work. Kinda. I bought a new soldering iron for this specific task. Seats has been struggling a little bit with the wiring diagram, so uh, you get me. Nice wiring diagram for you. Oh, look at that, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> wiring diagram. My wiring diagram. Dynatech ignition instructions, and we're getting somewhere. Yep. Look, where it's gone all brittle, the wires are all pinched. Coil pack has gone in, just mocked up. I'm gonna get make a different bracket for that because that's horrible. Starter motor is plugged in, Dynatech ignition is in. It's not timed, obviously, but that's in, so we know where the wires go. And uh, yeah, it's coming together. But this is the F2R rally box, so that takes a direct feed off the battery, trip meter one, trip meter two, road book, road book remote, LED indicator that you've got power, and then the spare 12 volt is actually a screw-in feed that you could put like a USB charger on or heated jackets or whatever you wanted on there. So that is the next one that's going to go up. Yeah, that's quite nice like that actually, isn't it? So you might mount it like that and then it's out of the way. The bar has designs headlight will obviously go over the top of here and it'll keep it all neat and tidy. Oh, and we put the starter motor up, the star button on. That's on. Battery box is mo mocked up, so that's for the road book which I ran you through. That's mocked up, got power to there. The ignition wires are run. The black one is the feed for like the headlight, heated grips. Yes, you heard, heated grips. <laughs> what are they? Stator? Coil? What? Co coil leads. Coil leads, they're in. These are the ignition leads that we just talked about there, and that is the leads for the power box, power box. For, the for the road book. The relay is in and on, that's all there. This is for the rear brake light and tail light, so that's run down there as well. All the wires are in, we just need to put connections on it, but we're not gonna put connections on it until basically everything else is on and in position. And then I've mounted up the rear mudguard. The saddleman seat is mounted up, and I've mounted up the tail light. So that is all on and in. And it's only taken us like 46 hours, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Totally fine. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Seaton. That's okay. <laughs> He's waving. <laughs> Next time on Full HD. Oh, this is going to be a pain in the ass. How's that for Blue Peter moment? A small list of tasks, isn't it? Ah, it was a dickhead again. Might as well throw that out.